Hey y'all, it's Marcia Lachey. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, then welcome to my channel. Now this is probably one of my most requested videos outside of hair tutorials. And today we are back on the topic of endometriosis and how I was able to conceive naturally with stage four. Now in this video, I'll be sharing some tips and advice on how I was able to conceive naturally after being diagnosed with stage four endometriosis. Now, I want to say that these work for me. They're not guaranteed to work for everyone as everyone's case is different. So what worked for me may not work for everyone else, but I do want to say that these tips are definitely worth trying. Now, let me just start off by saying living with endometriosis is hard. And many are living with it and don't even know that they have it. Then there are women like me who have struggled with bad periods all their lives and then only find out that they have it once they're struggling with infertility. So um, in my case, I mean, I knew something was going on with me for years. I knew something just wasn't right with my period. So just know that you are not alone. There are so many women who struggle with fertility as well. So for those of you who followed my journey, you know that I was diagnosed with stage four endometriosis in 2017. I got the surgery done in 2017. It was July 2017 on Wednesday to remove my endometriosis and I got pregnant 11 months after my surgery. Now I do want to say I had so many down days after my surgery. I went through depression. I suffered through anxiety. But I now like to look at it this way. God gave me this platform and this illness and he wanted me to sit in front of you guys in front of this camera and open up and share what I went through so that I can help somebody else. But I do want to say that I'm honored to share my journey with you guys and if I can just help one person, I am satisfied. So I mentioned in my previous endometriosis video that I was having symptoms of it since like my preteen years. So at that time, I thought that heavy and painful periods were normal until I saw my friends and cousins around my age who weren't going through the same thing that I was going through. They weren't having the painful periods. They weren't curled up in a ball on the floor, like crying and every time their cycles came on. It was just me and I was like, okay, like something's not right. So as I got older, I did see several doctors, I saw several gynecologists who all wanted to throw me on birth control. I went through several different pills. I had the, the depo shot, which I also mentioned in my previous video. That's one of the worst things I could have done. And um, it really prolonged my periods even more and made them worse. So I would definitely recommend not to get that shot. But again, check out my video if you want to hear about that. So yeah, I had seen several doctors and it wasn't until I was like in my mid twenties that I went to a gynecologist who sat me down and mentioned the term endometriosis to me. And she said that that could be the reason why I was struggling with heavy and painful periods. But again, I was in my mid twenties. I was single. I wasn't trying to have kids. And I was just, my concern was just heavy and painful periods at that time. So, um, you know, I kind of brushed it off and just went about my life for the next few years. So it wasn't until the age of 30, I was with my then boyfriend, now fiance, um, that I went to another gynecologist at the time and she also mentioned the term endometriosis and I was like, okay, that's the second time I heard this. So um, again, all my other doctors had brushed it off and just wanted to be put on birth control. And the term endometriosis wasn't like as known as it is now. But it wasn't until I was 30 when I was trying to conceive that my doctor set me down it's like okay I think you have you may have endometriosis you have all the symptoms and being that you're trying to conceive I think you should have this surgery done. So I did have two out of about six doctors that mentioned the term endometriosis. After I spoke to my gynecologist again I was 30 years old um, she did refer me to a reproductive specialist. So because I was trying to conceive, that's why she referred me to the reproductive specialist. Other than that, I believe she would have done the surgery, but um, my reproductive specialist did do the surgery and I was able to conceive at age 31. So that's my tip number one is to have the surgery. The surgery that I had is called a laparoscopic surgery and I'm going to have it right here just in case I do not pronounce it correctly. And I had the surgery to diagnose and to remove my endometriosis. That's right, you have to have the surgery to get a diagnosis. So you can diagnose yourself. Um, you can't just go into the doctor's office and she will tell you you have it. She may say, I think that you have endometriosis, but she won't just go by the symptoms and say, oh, you have it. So you have to get the surgery done. And once you get the surgery done, you'll get a diagnosis. If you have it, 
may get your surgery and not even have that. It could be something else. Now, I feel like the surgery is very beneficial for me. Some may have to have the surgery more than once. I may have to have that surgery again. I'm not sure. At the moment, um, I'm six months postpartum right now. My cycle has not came back on after giving birth to my son. So when it does come back, I don't know if it's going to, you know, kind of help my period a little bit, me that I got pregnant, or if they're going to get worse. Who knows? But I may have to have the surgery again in the future. I don't know. But many people do have to have the surgery more than once. So most of mine was on my ovaries and some are still on my ovaries today. When I was pregnant and I went and got my um, ultrasound, the tech was like, I can see something on your ovaries. And I was like, yeah, it's probably from the endometriosis. So um, again, they can't really see it on uh, ultrasound. They can see like this area of like darkness or something that just doesn't look like a normal ultrasound but they can't give you diagnosis with the ultrasound at all so it sucks hopefully that changes one day so yeah guys many people tell me that they have endometriosis and the first thing I say is did you have the surgery and a lot of times they say no and the first thing I say is you have to have the surgery in order to get a diagnosis do not try to diagnose yourself you may have something else going on so just make sure you talk to your doctor in order to get that proper diagnosis. So you can have something like fibroids. With fibroids, you don't have to get a diagnosis with a surgery. So you can go in, get your ultrasound, um, most likely a vaginal ultrasound, and they can see it on their ultrasound and give you diagnosis right then and there. You can also have PCOS. You just never know what could be causing your painful periods, heavy periods, um, and your infertility. So again, make sure you talk to your doctor if you do think you have it and you have the symptoms. And if you are trying to conceive, talk to your gynecologist and ask her about reproductive specialists and see if she can refer you to a reproductive specialist to help you through your fertility needs. People who do think you have endometriosis, the good news is today doctors are a lot more educated. You know, they're much more aware of the term. It is on commercials now. There's also a medicine. I'm not even sure. It's a commercial with the, with the medicine that they have now, but the medicine has a lot of side effects, so it doesn't cure it either. It's just treating it a little bit, like treating the pain. So do your research if you decide to go that route. But again, talk to your doctor just to see what's best for your case. So just don't be embarrassed to speak with a doctor or speak with someone that you're close to just to have someone to support you. Again, I did feel down after my surgery. Um, a lot comes with that and I'll speak about that more in a moment, but just make sure you have someone to support you through it all. And let me briefly discuss what I remember about my surgery. So I remember I was given a local anesthesia, was the best feeling ever. My doctor made three incisions, the belly button, the abdomen, and my left side near my like hip area, and stuck a little camera down there, kind of like a biopsy, stuck the camera down, looked around on the camera to make sure I had endometriosis. Once they found it, they burned it or lasered it off. And again, I tell y'all, 80% of mine was removed. My doctor also checked my tubes to make sure they weren't blocked. So she did the dye test where they run this dye through your tubes to make sure it flows right through. Um, mine weren't blocked, but I do feel that too can probably help with some people's fertility. So um, like it's like clearing it out, if you know, if that makes sense. So also recommend checking your tubes to make sure they're unblocked so that could be something that's causing your infertility as well research does show that the tube test the dye test can increase your infertility so make sure you check that out i'm going to also put the name of that in the description box so recovery time took me about two weeks the first two weeks were very rough for me i was real stressed and eventually depressed after my surgery so that leads me into tip number two do not stress so stress can definitely break your body down. And after my surgery, I was real anxious. I was just, I was just on edge about everything. And mostly I was anxious to try to conceive. I didn't become obsessed with it, but I stressed out over it pretty much. I wasn't really stressing about the ovulation. I did get ovulation tests, but I didn't take it not one time. And I only didn't take it because I didn't want to stress myself even more. Like I bought them, they were there. 
but I just didn't want to like get my hopes up you know taking those tests and then just you know another level of stress for me in my opinion so I just left those there in my closet didn't touch them so I didn't need any added stress if you're stressing you can increase your risk of infertility even more so stress is the last thing that you need so try to find some activities and hobbies to cope with your stress and just to you know keep your mind off of the the infertility the painful periods the heavy periods just keep your mind off of whatever you're going through because if you're trying to have a baby the last thing you need is to be stressing and worrying about anything and try going out with friends drink some wine just do some things that you enjoy to just get your mind off everything there was stress before my surgery there was stress after my surgery um but i you know eventually i just learned how to cope with it by doing things that i loved and just to really just get my mind off of just not being able to conceive and I know the pains of having endometriosis can have you stuck in the house sometimes not wanting you to go out with friends and not wanting you to do this just wants you to be in bed all day from having these painful periods and making you a homebody but surgery should help with that so after your surgery you should be able to enjoy life a little bit more I know I did stress about it in the beginning but and my stress did turn into depression I think I probably was depressed for a good three months after my surgery once i started getting the hang of things and you know like i said doing things to get me out the house get my mind off things things got a lot better so just know you may feel down after your surgery too and i'm not sure if it's normal it probably is but again just find hobbies immediately after your surgery i waited a few months after mine but just try to find friends or something to do immediately after you find your surgery while you're recovering talk to somebody find something to do make do a puzzle something just keep your mind off of everything but the three months after my surgery i was depressed um i just stayed in bed a lot i just watched tv i ate I gained a lot of weight after my surgery i cried a lot i didn't want to see friends i did barely spoke to family and i was just feeling bad about myself and just wondering why i was going through all of this like at the time it was just like why me like i said now i i kind of understand why me but at the time i didn't understand it so here's why I was depressed, y'all. So I know I'm kind of going all over the place right now, so bear with me. So here's why I was depressed. So after my surgery, my doctor, post-op, we talk, and my doctor tells me that 80% of my, my endometriosis was removed, but I had 5% chance of conceiving. My egg count was low. I can't remember the number, but it was low. And... Not only did I have a five percent chance, a five percent chance of conceiving, um, but I had only six months to try to conceive, and if I didn't conceive within those six months, my chances will go even lower. She told me that after those six months after my surgery, that it's a possibility that the endometriosis can grow back. Now, mind you, I didn't know this prior to having surgery so I'm not sure why she didn't tell me that before and maybe I should have asked you know more questions but I really thought once you did the surgery it got rid of it completely and that was that it wasn't gonna come back and nope wasn't the case. that's not the case like it stuck with us forever <laughs> pretty much and um and, and again my case I was stage four and so I did not conceive within those six months and I thought that was it. And my doctor told me that, well, the reproductive specialist told me that um, I could do IVF. That was probably like my only chance. And let's be honest, not everyone can pay for IVF. No, I, not everyone can afford it. That's $20,000. Not only is it $20,000, it's not guaranteed that you're going to conceive so you can do IVF it can work it may not work so I denied IVF I, I did I was not going to I did not want to take that risk of you know investing so much money that at the time we didn't have um, into IVF and it not even work so after my six months went by I just decided to make some life changes 
Now, before I started sharing some of the life changes that I made, again, I do want to say I feel like the surgery worked. I say that several times in this video already. At first, I was kind of skeptical, but now I can honestly say if I wouldn't have had the surgery, I would not be holding my baby boy every day right now. <laughs> yeah, I was skeptical at first because I wasn't able to conceive, you know, within those six months. But then I thought about how painful my periods were before having the surgery and after I had the surgery it helped a lot like I did have a few months I did have some painful periods a few months following my surgery but as time went on they helped a lot and my period became regulated I didn't mention that um, I believe I mentioned my other video but um, my periods were lasting more than seven days before having my surgery and that happened like when I turned 30 years old, my period started lasting long, like between 8 to 10 days, sometimes 12. And after I had my surgery, my periods were back to 5 to 7 days. And again, as the months went on, maybe like month 4, month, month 5, um, they weren't as heavy and painful as they were before I had my surgery. So now I kind of put all that into, you know, and I say, okay, yeah, maybe the surgery did help with trying to conceive. So my periods were coming every 28 days after having my surgery. Like on the clock, it was coming on like clockwork. That had never happened to me before. Even though the surgery had me go through blues and depression, I do, you know, I have no regrets now having that surgery. And I do feel like it helped me get pregnant. So yeah, one of the worst things you can do is let depression take over. If your doctor gives you bad news, like she gave me, don't let it stress you. Stress and depression are the last things you need when you're trying to conceive. So my tip number three is one of my life changes. Um, working out. It became my hobby. So like I said, I needed something to do to keep my mind off of not being able to get pregnant. So I started working out and I started working out a lot. So it wasn't until about month five post-op that I started to work out and I started to work out hard and I started to enjoy it. And I had a fitness partner, my fiance. He worked out with me. We lost weight together because I had gained a lot of weight after my surgery, as I mentioned before. So we both got in shape, um, you know, working out, you're throwing all the stress away. It's something that you can do to get away from everything as well. And hey, you're putting your body in order. I did a lot of cardio at the time. I did weightlifting. And I just made time to get in the best shape of my life and I immediately started to feel better. So I highly, highly recommend you work out. Find a partner, um, just go for it. Something about working out, it, it, it gets your body acting in a way it, it hasn't before. Like, you'll feel your body changing. You'll feel real, you'll feel real good. And tip number four is to diet. Another thing that goes along with working out. So after I started working out, I also started to eliminate a lot of things that I was, that was not healthy, that I was eating prior to my surgery and, and right after my surgery and um, things that, you know, messing up the insides that you don't need to be eating in the first place. So um, I eliminated a lot of fast food, cold drinks, um, a lot of dairy. So no, I didn't go vegan. If you do want to go vegan, even better. I couldn't do it. Um, but I also eliminated pork. No pork. When I did eat meat, I ate beef, a little bit of beef, not much, turkey and chicken. So I did minimize my meat intake and I increased my vegetables. I ate a lot of vegetables, a lot of fruit. Ryan and I, we meal prepped. So that also made it easier for, not, for us to not want to go eat out um, when we were working, you know, on our lunch break. So we had our food ready for the week. And again, that helped out so much. We didn't meal prep all the time. It can be kind of hard. So if you can, you know, you can try to meal prep on Sundays and it might last you until Wednesday or Thursday. And, you know, that's pretty much at the end of your week. And they'll help out a lot. So foods that I do feel like help me with my fertility are foods that are rich in iron, fiber, and again, non-dairy items. So if you can, eliminate dairy completely or minimize it as much as possible. In the mornings, I ate oatmeal and I would put some bananas in it. Um, I also had protein smoothies. I had protein smoothies like twice a day. I would have it in the morning, 
um, if I work out in the morning, I would have it before my workout, and then I would have one in the evening. Also, I was taking a prenatal vitamin. I started taking it after my surgery, like immediately after my surgery, and also my doctor did recommend it as well. And we did bake a lot of food. We didn't fry our food. Um, we baked and grilled. Baked chicken, grilled fish. I, f I forgot to mention fish. Fish, shrimp, we ate that a lot too. Um, salmon, catfish. So bye-bye fried foods. So cut down your bad carbs. Use olive oil to cook your food or a coconut oil is also good. And again, lots of veggies. And you also want to make sure you're drinking enough water. And my tip number five is iron. So increase your iron intake. If you are anemic, like I have been anemic for years since I was 15 years old. So golly, I've been anemic for I'll say 16 years because right now I finally have it regulated and iron tablets didn't always work for me but right before I had my surgery I spoke to my primary care doctor and she recommended me to see a hematologist so she referred me to the hematologist and the hematologist recommended because my iron tablets weren't working for me um, and I had been anemic for so long and my iron levels were so low he recommended that I do IV iron which is exactly how it sounds. You get your iron pumped through an IV and I had two sessions of that and y'all, I went from having no energy to, I, I can't even explain the difference. Like I don't even remember how, I don't know how I was walking around when my period would come on it because I was losing, losing so much blood and I was so weak and again that made me anemic so I don't know how I was walking around with painful periods and on top of that I'm anemic with no energy like zero energy like nada like negative something <laughs> and after I got my IV iron my energy level went through the roof like I to this day I feel great like I'll feel sleepy because I haven't had this you know sleep with baby but it's nothing compared to what I was feeling like with my iron levels being extremely low so if you're anemic and iron pills do not work for you definitely speak with your primary care doctor and see if she can refer you to a hematologist ask her about IV iron and see if it's a good solution for you and tip number six God praying to God several times a day every day will help your sanity and will give you what you need to stay positive. But there's one prayer that I pray every day for about, about three weeks before I got pregnant. And I'm also gonna have the prayer below in the description box, but it's a prayer. I'm Catholic, by the way. And Catholics tend to pray for saints for different things that you know we need or are loaned for or whatever. But I pray the prayer of Saint Gerard, which is a prayer for infertility. And I pray that prayer with all my might. And like I said, two, three weeks later, I was having symptoms of being pregnant. I was like, I was praying this prayer and bam, like I'm pregnant. But I kept praying and praying and praying this prayer. And I really feel like this prayer helped me out. Somebody up there heard me. And hey, even if you're not Catholic, you can pray to the saints. And I just continue to pray this same prayer throughout my entire pregnancy every single day. I prayed this prayer throughout my until I delivered my baby boy. So a few other things I would like to mention. Limit your amount of alcohol. If you're smoking, it may be best to stop. Also, I read about acupuncture. I was going to do acupuncture right before I found out I was pregnant. That was going to be like one of my last options. Acupuncture also is known for treating infertility so it's definitely worth a try and a little tip sometimes Groupon may have some deals on it in your in your city and I also heard that fish oil can help with fertility so again something you can try and of course make sure you're taking your multivitamin as I mentioned I started taking my prenatal vitamins right after my surgery you can even start taking it like now so that's the end of this video. I hope that you leave here with some hope and positivity knowing that you can get pregnant with endometriosis no matter what stage you're in, no matter how heavy your periods are, how painful, um, how long it's been going on. I know it's easy to say that, but just know that it is 
possible. I know how it is to long for a child that you've been wanting for so long and to live years with infertility and just, you know, having those struggles. I, I understand. But I'm a living testimony to tell you if it happened for me, then it can happen for you too. Thank y'all all for watching and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.